doing one, two, three. All right, so we are back. Um, finally, looks like I have my server set, my device set up. Um, it's going a little slow, but it looks like it's right. Okay. Let's delete that pest app. Let's close this up. So a couple things you have to do when you first get started. Um, I, while everything was loading, I went ahead and did it, but I'll just go ahead and show you. So inside, to get the plugin to work on Android, you need to go inside the, um, the main activity in your project. So you have our source, Android, assets, blah, blah, down here inside of your main activity. You need to import the SQLite plugin, and then do here on the bottom, you need to add it. Um, and then once you have it added, you know, just to be safe, we can come back down here again and run our command. Kind of think everything over. Oh, let's see. Cap, see what use me so nice. We read this build, right? We're an extremely sure we use. Lead to server key and the config. Well, let's see, let's see if we run into any problems before we go through all that. All right, so everything got synced up and moved over again. Um, Actually, let's let's now well, let's try and just run it. I'm gonna cap run Android. It's gonna rebuild everything and should start the development server. It should be pretty quick because everything's built already. Um, like I said, all we've done so far is we've we made the change to the main activity so that it can identify the plugin. Um, let's take a look at what we have going on over here in. And um, our event log, it says it can't find the emulator, so let's try and run this guy again. See if we can connect to it. Our build's done, app's firing up. Mm. Okay, so um, a couple of things that I discovered in my testing. So, um, first thing first. In my testing, I found that there, for some bizarre reason, and I am going to do a little bit more investigation, that this, where's my data file? Uh, my import JSON, for some bizarre reason, it doesn't like this line when I try to load it on Android. So let's try and comment it out and see if I get better results, right? So you see, once I comment out that line, it's loading everything fine. And just to kind of refresh on where we are on the app, um, I click a specific item and I can see that item up here in my current contact. What we want, once again, what we want to do is we want to be able to delete items and we want to be able to edit items now. So the goal is delete items, edit items, and run on Android. So we're already running on Android, so our first part is done. Um, the next part is let's be able to delete some items. And so to delete some items, we are going to put a little button down here on this contact card, and then we're going to pass the click event back to the parent, and then the parent's going to delete the object. So let's, um, let's go in our data service and just add our delete function first. So we can take this function, and we know we're going to delete contact by ID, and then let's just say delete, I believe, delete from contacts where ID is at, and then uh, once it's done deleting, we're going to send the result back to the top. So now we have our function. Let's just put that in there. We have our function set. Let's close our main activity. We're not going to be in there much, and um, let's go inside of our home page. Okay, and so in our home page, let's just add our delete function here because we're going to need it. Um, delete contact. And it'll take a contact ID and then we'll call delete. Um, well, let's see, what do we call it? We have, we're importing our functions here. Let's see, de delete contact by ID. So we'll take this function and we will pass it down here. We'll call delete contact by ID. And then um, we don't want to set it. But what we will need to do is we're going to need to re refresh our data. So we can do this one of two ways. Um, we'll just call a query function ourselves. 
instead of kind of embedding it. If you were using a state manager, this would be handled a lot differently, but we're not using state manager, so for now we're just going to call and reload our data. So um, after you delete the contact, query all your contacts. So this will be const data. And then let's set it again. Set query results. And then you should get the data to set the contact and so it should update the UI. The other thing you want to do is after you delete the contact, you want to clear, let's set our current contacts to null. Set the current contact to null. So, so after we delete it, this box will go away. All right, so this is how we're going to handle the delete. Um, the thing that's missing is, let's get that out of there. The thing that's missing really now is my, let's, so how am I going to get this delete up? So what happens is current contact is where everything is. Let's move this out of the way so we all can see. Hmm. Come on. All right, so we can have a good look at our box. And like I said, we want to put a little button down here. And then the other thing we want to do is we want to say on delete. And then on delete, we are going to call our delete function, delete contact. Delete D E L E T E. Right, so it'll call a delete contact function. Okay, and so now let's go into current contact. I don't want to do that. Where's my current contact? It's my component. Current contact. We just said on on delete. It's going to be called, and then what we want is let's add a little button down here at the bottom. Find button. Close that out. Delete. Let's make this size small and color danger. Okay. And um, let's see. Okay, let's just do a little bit style. Let's see what Y L E equals. Padding eight. It's a little padding around. Oh, oh! I don't, I don't want to put the padding there. Basically, I think I do this. Okay, so we put a little margin around it. So now we have our delete button, and then what we want to do is in the on click, we just want to. We're going to do basically what we did with the. We, we want to call, so let's do this. Um, on delete, well, we have to pass it our contact ID. And since we can't have this function running all the time, we got to go like this. Okay, so when I click this button, it will call my on delete function. Um, how are we feeling? Are we feeling like we got it right the first time? So let's click on new guy, click delete for new guy, new guy's gone. Um, the other thing is actually let's do delete contact. Yeah, if we were thrown an error, we would have seen something. We wouldn't have got our contacts updated back so we know everything's fine. But let's uh, window alert delete. Success. Um, and let's try. So everybody's back. Delete success. Everything's gone. Delete. Delete success. Okay. So we know delete's working. So the next step is to add an edit button. And on edit, we want to be able to edit this contact. So let's go and let's start with putting another button in here since I'm lazy we are just going to do some styling like a styling hack like this non-binding space let's do that twice they put uh, two spaces in there um say on edit 
and then we will we don't need it to be dangerous anymore why is it oh it doesn't know what on edit is so let's add, add on edit as another event we want to respond to so we add on edit up there actually I just realized I don't because I'm doing the margin around all of my buttons I don't need to put the space there so let's take that space out and let's, let's say edit Okay, um, and let's change the order. Let's put the delete last. You don't want that to be the first thing you do. So edit and then delete. Okay, so now we have our buttons, but when I click on the edit, I need to, I'm calling this on delete, so I need to handle it back up here at home. So let's go into home. See, so we have on delete, and now let's add, um, we said on edit. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna try to save creating a, another function unnecessarily. So what we're gonna do is we are just going to go to the new route. So to go to the new route, we need a way to get to the routes, and the way we get to the routes is we need to get history. So let's do const const history history equals use history, and then. We will come down here and we will say history push. And we're going to send it to a new route that we're about to create, and that route is going to be called um, edit contact. And then we're going to pass it an ID. Which way do I go with the ID? It's been so long. Um, Oh, we need to go up here first. Edit context slash. And then what we want here is we'll do this dollar sign ID. And then we will get the ID from here. D. And so that should push us to a new page called contact. So that looks good. Now let's go and create a new page. Um, pages, I'm gonna call this, let's call it edit contact. TSX, let's go in here, same file. Um, so this. Any, I don't think we're going to pass anything in, but let's just get it, and then let's call this edit contact, and then we want to return edit contact, and a lot of this stuff is the same from the render specifically, so we're just going to copy the whole render over from edit into our edit contact. We'll return. Let's import everything. Add all missing imports. Why does that never work the first time? Oh, because it doesn't like this. Let's see if that gets me in a better place. All right, now we have all the imports. We don't need any of these guys. Um, but that is SQLite edit. So we got edit there. We have the padding, we have edit contact. Let's get rid of these guys so we don't need them. But there are a couple things that we do need. Um, First of all, we need our back button up here at the top. So let's go inside of our toolbar, ion buttons, buttons, ion back button. So that should be able to send us back. So that's the first try. Let's see if we got that. So let's go here, new guy, edit. Oh, I didn't have my route. So um, uh, let's go to app TSX. We just go go right here and um, edit contact. I think it was. And then we get our ID passed in, and then this should be edit contact. Automatically got imported up here. That's what's going on. Let's just click our Android back button here. Now we get our SQLite edit, but I did not um, put my slot in, so let's go my edit contact, buttons, start. All right, let's try again. 
And there we go. All right, so the next thing we do is we need to get, let's go to app. We need to get this ID parameter because we're going to use that to get this record. So let's go into our edit contact. And I believe that we can do this. Let's say const. Um, and we're going to, the structure, we know we're getting an ID from that. We say use params. import that from React Router, that should give us our ID. It's complaining because our ID isn't being used yet. And let's just stick it here on the end. So we'll know in the page, actually, let's just do it like this. We'll know in the page the ID of what we're editing. Um, ID is not a head type, so it doesn't, doesn't have a type here. So let's say type any and see what we get. Okay, send this back. Why isn't this recalculating, recomputing? All right, sometimes it's not happy, so I'll just throw it out and reload it. So let's load this guy again. Click on a new guy, edit. So we get our ID four on the end. So see, let's click on one. Edit, we get our ID one. So we know our, our ID is coming over. So next thing we want to do is when we load the page, we want to actually load the content. Since we're not using any sort of state manager to just pull the current item from, we've got to create a database to get it again. We only want to create the item when the ID changes. And so this is what we're going to do. And then inside of our use effect, we're going to call a call. And um, let's just, we, need to get it from our data service. And we can go back to home because home does this already when it gets the current contact. So all this code it's doing right here, this is exactly what we want. So we're just gonna lift this up out of here. We're gonna come inside of my edit contact and inside of my use effects. We're gonna call this since we can't handle the await inside the use effect. We will just cheat and we will just use an if then. Sorry, not if then, we'll use the then. From the promise, we'll get our contact from here. Um, this is not a contact ID anymore, it is an ID. So we'll take this ID, take the ID, copy. And this is, let's set this to any, so everybody's happy. We need to import this, so add all. So now we're importing to get our contact ID from our data service, and then we need to set our current contact. We'll pull that over from home too. So where are we? Set current contact. So edit contact, set current contact. Let's import our use state. So it's added our use state up there. We have our current contact. We're gonna set our current contact from here. Um, needs to be inside. And so now we're set. So. Um, the next thing is we actually need to be able to edit some fields. So let's go in here and put some fields in. Since this is kind of basic, um, I'm gonna just cut and paste the first field in and then just kind of explain what we have going on. So um, let's import the missing imports. And so here's what we're doing we're gonna have a list of ion item objects that will uh, map to each one of the elements. And so we have first name, last name, email. And so what we're gonna do is let's go up top here and do const first name, gonna set first name, this equals use date any Initialize null. And then we're gonna do it for our first name. We'll do it our last name. And then we're gonna do it on an email. First name. Come on. Last email. And then set this equals last. And they set uh, email. Okay. And the other thing that we're going to do here is after we get our current contact information, we're going to set 
these fields so that it can update the UI. So what we want to do here is we want to say set first name equals to C dot actually let's do this because since the names are the same I can just go like this So, uh, uh, there you go. This last one is email. And then we're just going to copy these. Set last name. Set email. Come in there. Um, what's it complaining about? contact emails, missing dependencies. Uh, I don't want to deal with that, so let's put this back in. Since we don't want to deal with duplicating, addressing that error, we're just going to use the value straight from here. And then what we want to do is set each one of them. So now we're going to set the first name, last name, email. So this way we will have a local state variable that has the appropriate information in it. And so, and then we are using the on ion change event. So that as the user types, it kind of will update that specific uh, local variable, which will then use these local variables for actually updating, making the call to SQL to update. So let's get the rest of our fields in here. So we have ion item. Item last name, item email. And so let's do this. This is set last name, and then this is last name. Uh, and so this should say last last name, first name, and then uh, email. And we want to do, 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 set email. Set email. And this should say email. So we're getting, as it's updated, we're getting actual values set on here. So you can see that. And the other thing we want to do is let's just add one other thing on the bottom here. And let's do current contact. Did I set the current contact? All right, so current contact. And then there's this last modified. Last mod. Let's see what we get. All right, and we want to kind of, I'm just putting this here as a kind of a placeholder. You, you can figure out how to format it properly, but just we're going to use it so that we can determine that the object has actually been saved and changed. So that because the last modified date will get automatically updated for us. And then um, down here, we actually need a button. So um, let's, let's take the buttons from here. Let's copy a button. Let's go back to our edit contact down here at the end. Let's use an ion button. And uh, we don't need it to be small, uh, but we need our button, add ion button. And um, what we want to do is we want to actually save this. So we don't need that, but we do need you can just use the ID parameter. And then that's what we're going to say update contact. Actually, we don't need anything. We can just call update contact directly because we have all the data we need in our local state. So on click update contact. And so let's add a, and so let's say all this update contact and it's complaining it doesn't have that function so let's add our update contact function const update contact equals async um, 
All right. So now we have our update contact. Okay, now let's see if, if we can get as lucky as we did with the delete. So let's go into our data service and um, that's our delete contact. And then let's do our update contact. Uh, update contact by ID, update contact by ID. And then I believe you don't query here, you run. And then we want to update Update contacts, and then I believe it is set, and then we don't have it anywhere. It is first name, last name, email, where ID equals that, and then now we need to kind of add all of the properties that it needs. And so um, it is going to need, I'm gonna be lazy and we're gonna destructure an array. So we're gonna say contact data, and then we are going to pass in the, con the contact ID then contact data, okay? And update contact ID. Let me just check to make sure that that's how you do an update. Uh, let me quickly look at my um, SQL data. Update contacts set. Yeah, that's how you do it. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. All right, but now we need this contact data. We're gonna say this is any. Oh, I, I wrote it right. So we have, um, get that out of there. We have contact data. Um, what's it complaining about? Can we property query of undefined database? Well, it's, we had a bunch of errors, so everything's bad. That'll all get straight when we reload. So let's go back and get our delete contact by ID, which is now exported. Now, sorry, our update contact by ID is now exported, so we can go to edit contact, and we should be able to say, wait, update contact by ID wants to be imported. Let's import it. Now it needs parameters, so it needs an ID. We'll use our ID parameter, and then we'll pass in all of these guys. So we'll pass in first name, last name, email. So then it has all the values that it needs for the update. What's it complaining about? Cannot read property query. Of all right, yeah, that's all still related to, um, let's just close this. Okay, and let's reopen it. Okay, and now things are, things should be better. Okay, um, where was I? Edit contact. So this will update the contacts, and then if it's successful, when it comes back from updating the contacts, we need it to go back to um, the home page or to this main page. So then here's where we're going to say we need the history again. So let's borrow the history that we got from our home page. Let's do our use history. Edit contacts, use history, and use history. No, oh, it cannot be called inside of function, so let's get this out of here, put it back up here. And then down here, we'll say history go back. So it'll be the same as if you push the back button. All right. Um, I think we are good. Uh, da, 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 let's just to kind of, yeah, I think we're good. Update the contact, we're passing a contact ID, and then we're passing the 
this object that it's looking for because it's a con contact contact data. First name, last name, email. That should update it. Um, let's give it a try. See if we're going to go two for two. So let's go new guy, edit, newer. Let's change it to newer guy, update contact. Um, we didn't refresh the data, but I think we can ver see if he changed by just go click by clicking edit. And it looks like it did not work because when I go back to edit him and it creates a database, it should have, let's try it, make it one more time, newer. Let me stop being cute. Let me see if, let's do this right. First name. This should have worked. Let's do this way. And then let's go up here and at the top. It looks right. So let's edit Bill. All right, so I guess it didn't like me doing the destructuring. So you can see it is editing. We're getting the name edit um, here. I reduced it back down, and then if I go back to edit, you can see Bill switch back. Okay, but notice my UI is not updating. And my UI is not updating because if I go back to my home screen, you can see here on my home screen, I'm only initializing the data the very first time. So let's fix that. So basically what we want to do is we want to, we're going to reload the data every time on the home page. And we're going to do that by going like this. We're going to say, we're going to use an Ionic um, use. And so every time the view enters, we're going to query the database and set the results. So let's do this. And then query set results. Actually, we can streamline this and just do this. I believe I can do that, can I? Yes, I can. So every time you enter this view, it's gonna query the results. Well, right now it's doing it twice because it's going to do it when the page first loads and then when the view enters, it's gonna do it again. So what we are gonna do is, we don't need to initialize the database here. We're gonna push the initialized database up a little bit higher. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take this out and we're gonna move that all the way up here into my app. And inside of my app, we're just gonna return like that and then change this to be like this. And then in here, only if there's an error, we'll say catch and then Uh, initialize and I N I T I A L I Z I N G. Initializing is that how you spell it? Initializing. All right, we need to import my database, so let's import that. Okay, so we're going to initialize the database here. So now that the database is initialized here, what we all we need to do inside of Home is I don't need any of this anymore. The database is being initialized. We only need to update the um, view when we enter. Okay, everybody seems to be a little confused. All right, but everything's all updated and we're back. All right, so we have our database, our data loaded. Let's look at Whiteley Smith. Here's Whiteley, let's edit. Whitley, Whiteley, weird. E -I, weird, let's update the contact. We come back. You can see the updates here. 
It doesn't have the contact information updated properly here, but that's okay because we what we really want is every time you enter to view, we want to kind of clear this out to make sure that um, there's nothing old there. So we're going to say set current contact is null. So um, let's try it again. So when I edit, and if I just come back, it clears out what was in there before. So let's try John Jones. Let's edit John Jones. Let's capitalize a couple of things. Let's capitalize that, John. But look at the end. So we see 979. Let's update our contact. Let's go back. It's capitalized, John Jones. Let's click, um, edit. See our last update date has changed, so we know that that's working. Let's just go back. We know nothing changed. Um, let's delete my new guy. Delete success. New guy is gone. Um, and I think we've covered all the things we wanted to cover. Uh, we added Android support, which we have now. We added the ability to delete items. Let's click. Delete success. We've been able to delete items, and then we added the ability to update items. Probably the last thing that we probably could do is the ability to add an item. Um, can I squeeze that in? Do we have enough time? We might as well just to be complete. So let me figure out the cleanest way. Let's clean this stuff up. Let's get some stuff out of here. Let me figure out the cleanest way to do that based on the code we already have written. Because the idea is we want to see if there's an interesting way that we can reuse my, um, where is this? If I can reuse this edit contact um, dialog, it would make it a lot easier. So let's take a second and figure out how to figure out how we're going to add an item. So let's, well, first of all, we know we're going to need a new function in our data service. So let's start there. And our new function is actually just going to be called create contact. Let's kind of use the exact same thing. We're just going to have our contact data. We're going to destructure it. And then we're going to have a database query that we're going to have to run. A database query we're going to have to run to get this all to work. And what we're going to do is say insert into contacts. This and C O N T A C D S, and then we don't need that set, and then we just say, um, we don't do I think you can do it this way, but this is the way I see it done more often first name, last name, email, um, and then like this values then first name comma last name comma email and then we don't need the contact ID anymore and first name last name email and then for the create contact it you actually need to do a run I believe okay so now we have our create contact and then we pass in our create data, which is an object. And so now we have the database side done. Now let's go and figure out how we're going to handle it here on the edit side. So if we go back, if we want to try to wait to use it with our current route. So let's do this. I think that react router will work if I go like this. Actually, let's try it like this. Let's try it with the edit contact, but if I pass in edit contact and I don't have a value, then we're going to know we need to edit. So um, let's look at my edit contact. So it has everything that we need. I mean, everything we need is right here. you got to find a way to make this work. So we're going we're gonna to figure out a way to make this work. What we're going to do is we're only going to execute this thing if I have an ID. If ID, that's going to be the trigger for everything. Okay. 
So only if I have an ID do I want to do all this other stuff. Otherwise, all these fields will start out as empty. And then also what we're going to do in here is on this update, we're going to say if I have an ID, then do an update contact. Else, if I don't have an ID, then we want to do an await. Um, what did I call it? Create a contact. Yes, create contact. And then we're going to pass in all this data. Okay. So let's see, let's see. There should be no ID. Actually, let's let's get really creative here and go like this. If there's an ID, then else. Bionic, React, so SQL, Light, Create. So if there's an ID, then we're going to edit it. Otherwise, we just keep the title as Create, and then we'll do the same thing down here. If, so if I have an ID, if I D, then update contact, else create contact. Let's see if this works. I'm going to wing in this. I'm doing this on the fly. So let's go over and come to my home. And let's go up in the menu. And add a create. So let's say ion buttons ion button. Uh, let's just say new to contact. We'll keep it simple. Import that. Add missing imports. You need to put this on the right, so we're going to say slot end. So we got a new contact over there in the corner. And what we want to do on a new contact, we're going to do just like we did before. We're going to push. Except what we're going to do different is we're not going to push an ID. And we're going to see if we still get the page. So let's try this. Can I do a router link here? Router. Once I can. So let's do a router link. Let's see if this works. I don't know. I've never done this before. So let's give it a try. Hmm. It looks like it could not find a route. Um, let's try it like this. All right, so let's try what I thought was going to happen, but what I wasn't sure, and that's probably what is happening. So let's try this. And let's call it create contact. Calling create. So now we're on here, we have its create, we have our information. Let's add Aaron Saunders. And let's see. Hmm. We should have created Aaron Saunders. 
Maybe you gotta put these in parens. Context, first name, last name, email, then values. I think that might be it. So let's let's try that change. That's interesting. All right, so what was going on? Let's delete that. So let's add that. Looks like I just didn't wait for the compile to work. All right, yeah, that was it. I just didn't wait for the compile to work. The 296 update, everything's gone. Let's say edit, edit, 73. So my update's working. Let's add one last new one. And we see the contact was created and everybody's happy. So we have accomplished all that we wanted to accomplish and a little bit extra. We've been able to add a new contact, delete a contact, updated contact. Um, we moved everything into a separate data service. We cleaned up the way that we're initializing during home. We added a fake alert. You can kind of clean it up to do something better. Um, but I think overall we accomplished quite a bit. I think this has been about another, altogether about another hour plus. Um, all the source code will get uploaded. Please make sure you uh, provide feedback and I hope you find this helpful and enjoyable and um, take care.